Masterclass is powered by Joy Business and brought to us by Goyle. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. Masterclass today is also brought to us by JL Properties. JL Properties, the city's favorite developer. Masterclass comes your way every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. and runs all the way through to 2.15 p.m. here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. My name, as always, is Yabanafo, and I'm happy to be your host for today's edition of Masterclass. In the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about AI and business, artificial intelligence and business. In the first conversation, we started talking about the introduction to AI and what exactly it was, the distinction between AI and business automation, if you like. And we, in that conversation, talked about the fact that AI is very relevant to the businesses that we do today. We talked about data capture and the analysis of data in last week's conversation. Clearly, it's important because data today has become more important than gold. Today we continue in that same line of conversation, but we're going to be looking at a slightly different aspect of AI, if you like, in business. Today we're going to be talking about customer experience. This year we've dwelt a bit on customer experience, and like I always say that we don't now look at it again as customer service, but we look at it as customer experience, and the reason being that now we're looking at it as if I dealt with myself and I went away, what would be the memories that I have of that experience, and would I want to come back? So today the focus is all on people and dealing with people and the experience that you have when you're offered a certain service. We talk about the customer being all of us in the sense that when you come to work in the morning and you sit on radio and you talk, then the people who listen to you become your customers. But when you walk across the road at lunchtime and buy a pineapple, then you become the customer to that person. So we all are customers. And at one point or the other, we must make this process of customer experience one that we would wish to go back to time and time and again so that our businesses can grow. In the studio with us today, we have back again Kobe Spike in Kruma, who is also a tech consultant and the host of Geek Squad. And uh, he spent some time with us sharing some thoughts today. He's back in the studio to talk to us about the role of AI in customer experience, a continuation of the first conversation, um, if you like. I promised um, last week and the week before that we are taking some thoughts from industry practitioners on AI. And uh, at some point in this morning's conversation, when we're able to we will play those sound bites so that you're able to understand because we always want to draw a connect between what we're talking about and what's happening in Ghana so that we don't begin to think that it's abstract, it's up in the air and it's irrelevant to us and it's behind some screen. But it's going on in Ghana today in various sectors of our businesses. We'll hear those thoughts and we'll listen to those sound bites at some point in the program. But today we want to go straight to AI in customer experience and uh, my good friend, my techie friend, Kobe is back with us here in the studio. Kobe, we're sharing some thoughts prior to to um, the show this afternoon about yep, the various yep. things that are happening in the field of AI. I will not uh, take the wind out of your sail. <laughs> I'll let you do that, to be honest. But otherwise, let's talk about AI and customer experience, if you will. So it's very interesting that um, today I was actually going, I looked far back into my post on Facebook at some of my um, customer experience. Cause I'm very big on customer experience. I'm very big on how a business makes me feel when I go there. Mm. And if it's good, I'll come back. If it's mm. not, trust me, that's the end. You're not yeah. going to see me again. And so I went into a banking hall today and I've already had very bad experience with that bank. Mm. So the extent I wanted to close my account in that bank. Oh dear. And <laughs> you know, yeah, the the tell, one of the tellers, so I went there because mm. the ATM had swallowed my card and one of the tellers just, which is not her job, but called me because she saw me just standing there and asked if she could help me. And I told her what to, and she told me oh, to wait for this guy and i was like huh that's a, that's a fresh you know <laughs> breeze that's mm -hmm. something i'm not used to in this yeah. bank and it reminded me of the same experience i had with a previous bank and that branch was at circle so i went to look up that post <laughs> to see please, if please describe it any further <laughs> <laughs> to see if you know it, it, it was the same feeling i had then and yes it was it was similar the experience made me remember the bad experiences i had had and how much of a breath of fresh air was that now is getting better customer experience. So the truth is, yes, companies and businesses, individuals are very concerned with how um, they can get good experiences out of business. And business should also be concerned with how they can give customers good experiences. Mm. And AI can help in a lot of these ways. So we're going to start, just jump right on into it. Let's go straight into it. Personalized customer interactions. Mm. I mean, we've come to an age where people everything is customized to us we can't tell because we are so used to it now but take for instance your social media 
it's personalized to you. You and I, our feeds are different. Mm. You and I, our Google feed, news feeds are different. Even our Netflix recommendations are mm. different because they have AI algorithms in there that are analyzing our interactions with the platforms and tailoring the content or whatever it is that we experience there to suit us. So whenever we come there, I love science fiction. Mm. I love documentaries and, you know, true crime. These are the kind of content that I want to see when I open Netflix. I wouldn't want to if I open and I'm going to see some content from maybe a Jacko or something. Maybe that's not my interest, you know, and that would make me not come back because I feel like, oh, they don't have the stuff that I want. But maybe they do. It's just that it's not been presented to me how I want to see it. Same with YouTube. The reason why I don't let people watch YouTube using my Google account is that they're going to mess up with my recommendations. When you open my YouTube, you see Kawao. You'll see, you know, BMW, you'll see Marcus Brownlee, uh, Mr. Who's the Boss. These are the kind of content that I watch a lot mm -hmm. and the stuff that I'm, I'm subscribed to. So you start to, YouTube <coughs> recommends these things for me. And based on that AI algorithm, based on the data they've been collecting, which is the interactions that I have on the platform, the videos I comment on, how long I watch a video for, all that data is collected and they use that to build a profile around me. So as a business, these are the things that you could do or customers experiences um interactions with you you can then tease out data that you want to use to let's say analyze them so as a bank maybe you could take use uh, their withdrawals patterns notice that okay this person withdraws money on holidays a lot so maybe what can i do for them during holidays maybe this um person usually uses their card at a hospital that means that maybe there's a health something you or could, they live close to a hospital. Or they live close to a hospital. You know, you could you could use that data to tease out some information about a person or to build a profile about a person. And it could be something that is as mundane as a customized message, right? So maybe the person's always spending their money at a sports bar whenever there's Champions League. So you know the person's a sports fan. You've built a profile based on that data you've collected. So then you can send them a personalized message this team is about to play, save you money on your using your card, go cashless by using your gold card, da, 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 whenever you go to your favorite sports bar. That person is going to feel like, oh, my bank knows me, you know, and I feel connected to the bank or that institution because I feel that they think about me or they know me. They, they've taken the time to know me. And humans are like that. We like it when our businesses or the brands that we deal with tend to become close to us. So me, BMW, everybody knows me, fanboy number one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one day somebody baked me a BMW cake. Mm -hmm. I posted and BMW liked it. I was head over heels. Mm -hmm. Like I was crazy. I was livid because you BMW. Come, come you to the factory and that's ah, like they'll, they'll kill me there. <laughs> but you see, I mean, there's something important you talk about. And I just mm -hmm. want to chip in quickly for our business owners. Do not use your official accounts for personal activity online. For the, for the fact that you're talking about, mm -hmm. because clearly data is now being collected in everything we do, and that data will become relevant at a point or in a meeting where you are absent, <laughs> and therefore the wrong solutions may be preferred for you. Mm -hmm. I'll just leave it there. Right. Yeah. Thank you for that. So, you know, even your marketing campaigns, if you, we're in the age of um, digital right now, everybody is doing digital campaigns, boosting stuff on Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter. You want to be able to target the right market, the right audience, and you know your clients. If you're able to build a, a, per, a, a personality about your clients, you're able to tailor specific marketing messages to them. So maybe, once again, let me use a bank as offering loans. And I love cars. You can get me by suggesting a car loan. Somebody likes houses. You can get them by suggesting a housing loan. Point of connection. You know, and that kind of thing creates that impression it, or it's it subconsciously connects with that customer mm. and you're making that sale without putting in effort to create a generalized you know a marketing campaign that would appeal to just a select people a select few because mm. only those who would relate with that ad may probably buy into that we're going to throw in everything and it may not be special i may not feel like Meh. okay i may not even watch it till the end so personalization is very very important so when you're doing the, um, when you employ AI, you're able to do these things because it lets you get access to data. Amazon uses that to suggest products to customers based on their browsing and purchasing history. Mm. So if you are searching on the internet, all those cookies that are following you, Amazon also takes that data and they use it to make recommendations for you. And also based on your purchase history, if you've been buying um, gadgets, 
It means anytime you go to Amazon, it's gadgets that they're going to recommend. If you've been buying baby stuff, next time you go to Amazon, it's baby stuff you're going to be Which seeing. Come up. If you're buying beauty stuff, it's baby stuff that you're going to be recommending. And with that, the person ends up even spending more. Because, oh, I've seen this. Oh, I like this. Oh, oh, I like this too. You yeah. know, and they keep going. And I didn't know this was here. I didn't know this was here. Exactly. You keep right. recommending stuff to them. And so how you do this is you collect the data, you analyze the data, you profile the customer, and then you do real-time personalization. Mm-hmm. So all that data you've collected, now you can personalize it. Because once the customer has interacted with your system, in real-time, data is a- uh, AI is able to process that data and build that profile. A human being can't do that in real time. They would need time to go back, sit down, look at the data points, start drawing connections and inferences. And there, there's a lot of error that could come out from that. Imagine a person's tired and <laughs> you just start clicking anything just to get it done with. So you get all that. And contextual recommendations. It has to be in context. You're not going to just recommend just because it's baby stuff. Then you start recommending something that just has baby in there. So what if that baby... That word, that product that has baby in there, it does not even fit in the context that you're selling. So maybe <laughs> it's called baby something, but it actually means something totally different. I mean, I know people call their spouses baby. Yeah. So it could be a product that is for baby, but not for the baby. Yeah. And you've yeah. featured it in your catalog just because you didn't use an AI. You just use an automated system, which is just looking for the word baby. Yeah. So anything that has baby in there slaps it there. You can get some unintended consequences with that, and you you not be happy. So, so you need to know your technology exactly, or consult and get some help as well. Yes, right. And AI, as we've already mentioned, learns it adapts. So as time goes on, if it realizes that you didn't interact with these products, it means you don't like them. Mm. So it replaces them. It looks for different stuff that it thinks you would like, and continues shuffling till it finds the right formula for you. It finds the one that keeps you engaged Mm. same with netflix same with facebook same with youtube same with all these other platforms the more i recommend stuff for you the ones that you interact with it knows that you you are interested in them so it it does a a or b okay let's try a it likes a okay let's try b it likes b too okay now i can do all this and then create another one then once all this is done you're sure that you have actually personalized experience to suit your customer so moving from that back to the part of customer experience that a lot of people have issues with, which is the customer service. We'll start off with a digital customer service. Mm. Once again, a bank, <laughs> because I use banks a lot. I, I'm, I run cashless. So every time I'm dealing with the digital platforms that banks provide, so I'm either using their app or I'm plugging into a system that uses their APIs or whatever. I never have a challenge. I'm going straight to customer service. I do not, and I keep telling my friends, my friends are like, oh, but you know me, I work here, you could have called me. I'm like, if I call you, that defeats the purpose of why the customer service The system service should be exists. able to work end to exactly. end without me having to call you. Exactly. So if I don't ever have to call somebody I know at that business, it means they're doing a good job. Mm-hmm. And so I reach out to a lot of customer service, send a message. One problem I have is wait time. I'm, I'm very busy, so I can't sit down and wait for you to respond to me. I understand you're a human being, there's a cue. But that wait time will mean that I get tired, I get fed up, I get upset. It affects my decision making. And it will definitely affect my decision making because I will move to the next available platform. And go use that. And I'll and end I up pro- paying higher charges somewhere without even considering it because convenient. said with you. Yes, I'm, you, you know, I'm, I'm not, I probably won't even come back. So this is where AI chatbots and AI virtual assistants come to help businesses because they don't have wait time. They don't have off times. They're always on. And if you've ever used systems like ChatGPT or Bing Chat or even Google Bard, you know how very instant they are with their responses. Mm. And being an AI, it's not pre-trained on um, specific questions and answers. So it's not like the frequently asked questions. You know, there are chatbots that you go there and they ask you, what is your problem? And they suggest questions for you to, to ask it. And then because that's, it's been pre-trained on that model. But with an AI, you can train it to have a proper conversation with the person where it's asking you, what's your problem? How may I help you? Okay, I've seen this. Can I, could, have you tried this? Have you tried that? And it's... It sounds more human than a chatbot. A traditional chatbot sounds like what it is, a bot, a robot. So it's just 
you put in your question, you get an answer. You put in a question, get an answer. If it doesn't understand, they tell you, I'm sorry, I didn't understand this. Or I'm sorry, I didn't get that. If you've used your Google Assistant, your Siri, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's not always that it gets it. Those ones are called weak AI. Strong AI is the chat, the GPT, and the rest. They are able to have that conversation with you and help you solve the problems. Um, so in, in some certain banks, they have certain chatbots that provide personalized financial guidance. Mm -hmm. So you see, we brought personalized again. Mm -hmm. And it will assist you with account inquiries, even help your customers manage their finances through a conversational interface. So it, it creates the impression that you are chatting with a person. Mm -hmm. And one such example is Bank of America has one called Erica. And Erica would have that conversation with you and you think, oh, you're talking to a real Erica. And Erica would help you with your accounts and queries and everything. I'm not mentioning any local banks because they haven't paid masterclass. <laughs> <laughs> but I know some banks in Ghana are piloting mm -hmm. their AI chatbots. And yeah, we're, we're happy to see it. If you know, there's some pizza joints uh, that use virtual assistants as well. And they allow customers to place orders, track your deliveries, and even get assistance with your menu choices. So maybe you don't eat, you're allergic to something. You can chat with that AI you know, chatbot and tell it, I'm allergic to this. What kind of pizza can I get? And it will make a recommendation with, for you. It can ask you, can I have cheese on that? And it will, it will give you, you know, a recommendation. Or you can have a double, or you can have this, you can have uh, pepperoni to go with it, yeah. all that. And it sounds like you're actually having a conversation with a real person. So by doing that, and you can have the, you can have these chatbots working all the time. Mm -hmm. The benefits is that it improves your customer service. Constantly, the people who deal with you are going to feel like there's always someone to talk to. Meanwhile, they're all talking to the same person. But being an AI model, the conversation is not robotic. It's different. Using You've worked on it to make it a bit more human. Yes, using large language processing models. So you can now have, we can both have simultaneous conversations with these AIs mm. and the answers they give us vary because we can say the same thing in multiple different ways. And these AIs have been programmed to do that. Mm. So imagine that you have that. You don't, you're saving costs because you're not training too many people to sit at your customer service um, desk or office and nobody's going to call in sick. Nobody's going to have a bad mood. <laughs> and you just don't pay any salary overheads. You're not paying salary overheads or health or insurance or, or whatever or tax. <laughs> you are not. And it's scalable. It's scalable in the sense that so your, your customer base grows from 100 to 1,000 overnight. All you have to do is say, hey, I need more bandwidth. You're not going to say, I need more AIs because one AI can handle multiple clients. But you need more bandwidth for that AI to be able to handle all that traffic. So that scalability is the benefit that comes with AI. And you're not going to have to worry about reduced response times, which I have a problem with. Mm. It's always available. Anytime someone hits you up, it's there. And yesterday, remember, I'm sorry, last week. Mm. I'm saying yesterday because I gave another talk on AI mm. yesterday. I demonstrated um, Google's duplex. Yeah. And it was in one example, Google's duplex was having a conversation with a woman whose first language was obviously not English. Mm -hmm. So she, she, she didn't sound very clear. Mm -hmm. But the AI was able to understand her and book that appointment. And that was Regardless. very, very impressive. Yes. So multilingual support. Somebody calls your business. <laughs> they're French. How many of your customer service representatives today speak French? But you have an AI that can speak English, French, Spanish, every language that you can throw at it. And all you have to do is just start the language, it hears, and automatically just goes in there and then starts speaking French. It's not now, for English, press one. For French, press two. For, say, I can't cassa, miam, miam, sa. You don't have to go through all yeah. that to get there. The moment the person starts speaking, the AI detects that, okay, this is this language. I need to, you know, start to... I need to I, adjust. I'm smiling because it's so revolutionary. I know we're having a certain conversation before we came on it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I mean, we're not going to talk about that because you, you, you clarify the source of that data. Yeah. And therefore, we won't put it out. But my point is that all of this technology and all of these advancements are here to make our lives better. It's happening regardless. We don't have a choice. So we might as well plug in and ride with the wave so that we get all the benefits that it comes with. Otherwise, we're going to become obsolete real quick. Yep. It's going to happen and we're going to say it happened suddenly. But... It's happening now. Let's be a part of it. Yeah. Let's be a part of it. So, 
if you i mean imagine back to the multilingual support yeah. imagine somebody called and then they were speaking french and your customer service maybe you didn't set up your customer service to have french now somebody's going to cover the mouthpiece eh, who can speak french over here i'm hearing it because you haven't muted me and i've, I've experienced something like that where i called a customer service and i could hear all the background chatter and i was just there and i'm like somebody was complaining to somebody about a previous caller and it was so unprofessional i was like do these guys realize i can hear them <laughs> and you know you don't want it that it makes all the difference doesn't it does it? Yeah, it nobody's going to hear any of that and mind you you are also collecting data mm -hmm. because whilst people are talking to the ai the ai is also recording it's learning from the conversation mm. and improving so you you're not going to have to recording for training and improvement purposes because it's automatic. That AI is learning from the people Changes that are... Changes are quick, less expensive. Yes. Output is 100% all the time. All the time. Maintenance and is at near zero. Absolutely. Like, you barely... I like that you mentioned that. You're, you're barely going to have to maintain an AI. Just like you'd have to take your people to go and do a refresher course on new trends. There'll be no bills on health. No health bills. No health bills. Some, nobody's going to drop dead in your office and that's going to cost you any money. So, yeah. You have all that for your AI chatbots and virtual assistants. And basically, based on that, you can also get customer feedback, monitoring, perform. you can monitor your performance metrics, and you can apply even more machine learning techniques to it. So if you want it to be more sympathetic, you can tweak it. If you want it to be more official, you know how with Bing Chat, you can actually choose what I want it to be, precise, creative, or a balance of the two. Mm. You can do all that. Then... Moving away from that sentiment analysis mm. for a business, it's very good for you to know what the sentiment about your brand or your product is on the market. Now, this is something that I think even now every business should be leveraging on. It doesn't matter whether you are a small business, medium business, or even uh, you are the brand or you are the business yourself. Mm -hmm. you, should be, you should care what people are saying about you online. And this is possible to do there's there's so many tools to do that if you, anyone's heard of hootsuite mm -hmm. hootsuite lets you use social media monitoring tools to analyze sentiments and track you know customer sentiments based on across all social media platforms also based on pre-trained you know models the reason why i say pre-trained is that sentiments can differ across cultures in ghana i'm not sure an ai can tell if Excuse me, say I use the word fool and cheat. Mm. You know, like, it's not been trained to do that. If but it's not programmed, it doesn't have it. It doesn't have it. Gladly, AI is always learning. And if we feed it with the right data, very soon AI will be speaking, I can't, very, you know, fluently. And it would be able to do that sentiment analysis. And right, you. on Obichevi <laughs> Lamte Street. <laughs> and it would I get the names me, right. Yeah. <laughs> When you go into the North Kanishi area, you hear some of the very interesting <laughs> names when Google Maps is pr pronouncing them. And all these things help you as a business to gauge your customer sentiment mm. and identify, you know, potential areas to focus on. So maybe I every day, and it's, it's real time. So mm. every day, every minute, every hour, you're seeing what people are talking about your brand. How would you feel if some, there was bad news about you and you didn't know about it till it blew up? But if you're using AI, you can now tell in advance that this is peaking here. These people are talking about this brand. Maybe somebody went to buy, like had an experience. I bought shoes mm. and I poured it and it looked very weird. And I posted it on social media and I was asking, is this normal? And the conversation under it, I would expect that brand to come look at it and explain. I didn't get any of that feedback. So I stopped drinking that juice. That could happen to any mm. business. So as a business, you want to have that. So the moment something like this sparks, one, you're not going to have to rely on a human already. This is assuming that you are using AI for your customer service representatives or your social media, you know, and they're always on. So sentiment analysis picks that somebody's talking about the brand, throws it to the customer service AI that investigates. It goes, reads through the comments, sees what it is, comes back to give a report to whoever is uh, we have something called man in the loop mm -hmm. so maybe you can have a human being review that say bring it to your attention that hey for your attention how do we deal with this if the ai can deal with it we'll deal with it but sometimes you want to have a man in the loop a human being in the mm -hmm. loop to 
essentially make sure that the right conversation or the right um, response is put out there. Then you get to address that issue. Hey, this is fairly normal. It happens, explain it, da, 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 then we move. But if that doesn't happen, you're going to have a situation like they have with me now. Mm. I'm not going to buy that brand again because mm. I fear for my stomach <laughs> and my health yeah. because I don't know what it is. And nobody provided an explanation. This is across all social media platforms that I posted it. So imagine if you had a system that was tracking this. And it happens, sometimes it may be a blog post. Mm. Nobody knows that blog post. You can't have a human being whose job is to go through every single blog post to go and... Efficiency would be... It would be an issue. Near zero. Yes. So you go through this, you use an AI model, it does all this for you. Instantly, you get your, your feedback, you get reviews, mm. you're able to analyze, you're able to give instant feedback to clients and then give them a great experience, a great customer experience. I'd like for us to draw a connect to what's going on here in Ghana mm. and some of the uses of AI. I mean, we went shopping, we went to speak to a few people in the industry, and we got some thoughts on what AI is doing in Ghana. Let's take a quick listen to some of the information that we were able to gather. I think the use of AI by businesses in Ghana is more prevalent than we think. For example, it's widely used in the cybersecurity industry to improve cybersecurity. Um, AI is used in malware detection. Um, tools is used to improve network security by monitoring network traffic and detecting anomalies that indicate uh, possible security breaches. Um, is used in user behavior analytic solutions. And I think these are all um, tools that any organization who is serious about cybersecurity already has or is looking to acquire. Um, I think it's here to stay, and it must be wholly embraced um, even by small businesses, um, because the potential for business optimization using AI is endless. I mean, predictive analysis, can use in customer care, um, customer services. Um, it can imp- I believe it can help businesses optimize their operations and improve their bottom line by reducing costs and increasing efficiency as well. That was private information security consultant Jackie Hansen sharing some thoughts on AI. Again, we still went shopping. We got some thoughts. We're sharing this so that we can draw a connect on this conversation and what's happening in Ghana today in the field of artificial intelligence. Let's take some more thoughts. The institutions in Ghana that have embraced or will embrace AI will be more efficient and that will improve the bottom line. Software that supports customer engagements the chatbots we engage with are all driven by AI. AI functionalities that enhance the AI experience like conversational AI and speech recognition are all available. Applications with geolocation functionalities depend on AI supported by Google Map. Microsoft Tools Security Operating Center applications fraud detection tools our social media engagements, our reporting, our analytics are all heavy on AI. That was also private technology consultant Samuel Tamaklu sharing some thoughts on AI. Just remind us as today's edition of Masterclass is brought to us by Goyle, Goyle Good Energy, Goyle Yenara Yedia, and also by JL Properties, JL Properties, the city's favorite developer. We want you to be a part of that conversation. We will open the phone line shortly. Before we do that, though, we'll take a quick message from our sponsors when we come back. We get interactive. Welcome back. If you've just tuned in, this is Masterclass here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. We're here in the studio with Kobe, Spike, and Chroma talking about artificial intelligence and customer experience. Phone lines are now open. Numbers to call 0302-216-541. That's 0302-216-541. Send us your comments on 0551111997. Let's hear your thoughts. What has been your customer experience lately? How do you reckon that the conversation on AI can help and make that better. Numbers to call again, 0302216541, or you can send us your comments on 0551111997. Just also remind us that today's edition of Masterclass is brought to us by Goyle. Goyle Good Energy, Goyle Yanara Yedia, and also by JL Properties. JL Properties, the city's favorite developer. Owning a home in a serene and strategic neighborhood should not be a luxury, but a necessity. And at JL Properties, we make that, a dream, that dream a reality. JL Properties has been building homes for more than a decade. 
enjoy the ease of owning a fully completed home or choose from our off-plan packages. JL Properties, the city's favorite developer. If you have a motor vehicle of any kind, then here's some good news for you. Your oil market marketing company of choice, Goyle, makes life ever so convenient. Goyle now accepts Momo for all fuel purchases. Just remember to Momo it at Goyle. Goyle, good energy, Goyle. Yeah, Nara. Yeah, their phone lines remain open. Numbers to call 0302216541. You can also send us your comments on 055-1997. Pick up that phone, give us a call. Let's hear your thoughts. How we can make our total customer experience as, a, as businesses, as entrepreneurs, as an economy, as a country, better, much better. Kobe, while we're waiting for those phone lines, mm -hmm. to ring, maybe just one quick reaction to some of those thoughts from Jackie and uh, Samota Maklo. Yes, so... One thing Jackie mentioned, which is in what I was talking about, mm. was predictive analytics. Mm. <clears throat> Sorry, which is also very, very important because it's it can help you forecast your customer demand. Mm. So, an, a typical example is Starbucks because they're not here. I can mm. use them. <laughs> they 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 use predictive analytics to actually optimize their inventory management and they ensure that the popular items are always available. Mm. You know that feeling of you go to a restaurant or somewhere to go get. A meal or something, and they'll tell you that oh, it be me or some is not there. <laughs> no, no, what's annoying? They will ask you what you want first. After you've chosen it, they'll let you sit down, and then they go, we'll and go come and come back and ten minutes, and they say, okay, you don't have this one. Me, is, is that phrase? Some is not there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that kills me. Like, wow, really? <laughs> okay, but you see, so where is some? <laughs> where is some? <laughs> go and bring me some. <laughs> So it's it's very important that you can use this because if you gather the data, you know over time yeah. that this is in high demand. It means that maybe we're buying a thousand; it's still not enough. We can increase it to two thousand; it's still not enough. Just a quick observation: I've not, I've, it's probably not true, mm. but I've said to people: people come to me and they say, "Yeah, we went for an interview in so and so embassy, and they didn't even look at all the paperwork. Went through all the trouble, and they were talking to me, and they were not even looking at me. And the questions were like they just wanted to say something, and they finished. I said, "Yes." But why not? They said, but why should they do that? I said, they did the interview the moment you walked onto the compound. He said, how do you mean? I said, when the first camera picked you up, they started running you through the system. They went to your social media. They went to your bio data. They went to everything. They, the form you filled, you filled it online. They've checked your bank account. They've checked the data. The interview is done. It's you done are already. at the counter for the results. But they won't tell you that. So they're just talking to you. Is that something that could happen in the future? That is something that could even happen now. Well, there you go. I mean, human resource um, companies, like... Um, departments should mm. be using AI. Some are using AI. Mm. I remember when Twitter opened its um, West Africa mm. branch and they asked for applications and there were thousands of applications and I spoke to a friend who was like, who oh, fingers crossed they'll pick me. I said, let me see your CV. Send me CV and I said, they won't pick you. He's like, why? I'm like, first off, the format of your CV is so wrong. Mm. The AI that's going to scan through this thing is not going to pick you. And I had to explain to him that they're looking for keywords. The role you're applying for what are the key words? Did you read the description or the job description? Mm -hmm. What are the things that you're expecting you to be able to do, to have been, to have done, to have been capable of doing? Mm -hmm. These are the things you're looking for in your CV. You've listed work jobs you've done and stuff, but there are no key words that stand out. You didn't even state your role in, in, in clear wording enough. And that's what happens. So they do all these things. They take that information. They scan through it with the keywords as references mm -hmm. and start to look for, okay, what did you, what successes have you achieved? What um, jobs have mm -hmm. you completed? Mm -hmm. And all these things. So same thing could apply in an embassy. An embassy just needs to get your name, run it. There's an AI right now that can even type in your Twitter mm -hmm. and it would build a profile about you. It would write a profile about yourself there you go. by scanning the internet, by going through your last 300 tweets. And trust me, it's quite accurate. Unless your persona on Twitter is different from your persona in real life. Which then, again, tells us who exactly you are. <laughs> because if in real life you're a Mr. Nice Guy, but you're, you know, that bad, something else, something else on, online, it also comes out. So that's why in, in recent times, people have been told that you need to be careful what you post on social media. I saw a tweet quite recently about a girl who was complaining about her bad uh, her terrible decision to go on only fans mm. i don't know if i'm not going to go into the details mm. about what only fans is but those who know only fans know mm. and she set up on only fans made a lot of money mm -hmm. and she started going to look for a job and it came back to bite her because a quick search and then boom it comes the, up. everything comes up and this is only search imagine if 
and AI was applied to it, that could go even further. Phone lines are still open. Numbers to call 0302216541 or send us your comments on 0551111997. We're talking about AI and customer experience here with Covey Spike and Chroma. Let's hear your thoughts. What do you think about it? How can we make customer experience better using AI? Covey, let's hop a bit on on our online behavior mm -hmm. as companies, as entrepreneurs. Earlier on, I mentioned the fact that some business owners use official um, <coughs> handles for personal browsing and mm. and that's simply because they can simply because the company is paying for it it's official so let me just use it how detrimental can that be in terms of the data collection process and therefore subsequent recommendations going into the future how how can that harm a business so if you're using it for your personal <coughs> stuff it's it can impact you let's just use the amazon example for instance where the recommendations that you're getting on Amazon is based on your frequent purchasing and stuff. And it's meant to make your life easy because it reduces the time spent searching for stuff and it applies to the whole part of the internet. Mm. How you use your account, the if you're doing a Google search, how you search is tied to your account. That activity is collected, that data is collected. So if you're using a company account to be doing personal stuff on the internet, all your recommendations, everything that's going to happen. You want to build a good database for the business, but then you are diluting it with your personal stuff. So somewhere along the line, you're looking for a recommendation on this. And let's say you're going to use an AI system to do that. It's going to now compare, use maybe your personal preferences or stuff like your personal habits online to recommend these things. But that may not suffice for what you're looking for for the business. Say you're looking for a printer for your small business. And you're looking for something that can print at a certain level, but you're use, you've been using your personal, your business account as your personal stuff for a long time. The system's recommendation is going to be based on what you you do personally, because, okay, judging from your previous purchases, you're probably interested in a printer for the home. Mm. You buy that printer, take it to the office, it breaks after the first month because they're using it a lot. Next time you fix it, it breaks. That's money that you're losing fixing, but it would have recommended a, an office printer for you if you are not using it. If you were using it for your office and it realized your search queries, you know, matched what it, it, it what the data it has about you, that this is probably a recommendation for an office based on your last purchases, based on the kind of thing, your browser behavior or your your activity online. This is what it should recommend for you. So you want to be careful what kind of um, activity you do with specific accounts. If it's your work account, let it remain work account. If it's your personal account, let it remain personal account. Because we don't want the data collection process to, to be diluted. Data integrity. Yes. Let's talk about sentiment analysis. I know that all of this technology is being modeled around humanity and how we live and how we um, behave and, and the things we do because we're creatures of habits and mm -hmm. all of that. And clearly that data is then mined and then reverse engineered to make our processes better. But we're talking about sentiment analysis where keywords come in. Mm -hmm. And for example, I'm reading an example here. I'm not going to read all of it, but there are certain keywords that have been highlighted. Some in are positive, some are negative. Okay, so I just read this one. I mean, it just says um, it has the word loved. It's highlighted. It has the word amazing. It's highlighted. Pure bliss, excellent, highly recommend, thrive. Those are words which are part of a whole paragraph. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to read the whole of it because it's proprietary for copyright issues. Then there's another phrase that has the word the phrase stay far away <laughs> untrustworthy i wouldn't work with them again mm. those have been highlighted what are the learnings that we should be putting our mind to as business owners as entrepreneurs as individuals going forward because ai has come to stay so how should we be shifting and positioning ourselves in how we communicate going forward so that we don't get the wrong end of the stick because some of these things, if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. So it's great that you mentioned this. So there's so many um, verticals to this. One could be that maybe you're a business and maybe you're an, a software developer. You have an app in the store. You want to see how people are, the comments, the reviews. Positive reviews means that it's going to be recommended to more people. Mm. More negative reviews means that it's not going to be recommended to people as much. So that affects your turnaround that affects your interaction your adoption so ensuring that's why you notice that any <clears throat> sorry app you're using they ask you to post a review mm. a few moments into the app they'll ask you how did 
did you enjoy this? Would you mind rating us? Would you mind leaving a review? Because the more you rate, that AI in itself is also judging that app. Hey, okay, you're getting good thumbs up. It means people love you. Let, let me show you to other people. Let me let other people experience you. Then the businesses that do social media. So a business decides that, hey, I'm going to put myself, my business on social media, be posting, try and get engagement to direct people to my business. Then somebody has a bad experience with you and they go there, they go and comment. A lot more people go and comment. It's all bad. It's going to affect your recommendation as well. If somebody even goes as far as reporting you on the on the platform, that affects your that affects your your reputation on that platform. Also, reducing the number of times you get recommended or people seeing your content. So you'll find out that you're investing so much. You've got a digital media department, you've got a social media departments. They're churning out content, but you're not even reaching mm. a fraction. A fraction might even because be the too algorithms much. are preventing it from going exactly out. because you're getting very bad reviews. So importantly, when people give bad reviews, you have to go and fix it. You have to get in touch. You have to, you know, try and get them to change their 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 experience with you or change that review that they posted mm. by customer service. You know, how did we perform? What mm. where did we go wrong? How can we fix this? If you fix that, it 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 benefits you in the long run mm. because at the long, uh, eventually it's going to now affect your your visibility online and people are going to see you. Clearly, information here has become um, quite critical, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's important that you mention all of this because if we understand it, then we position ourselves in a way that um, makes us able to take advantage of this. Let's talk a bit about self service. There's an example that we should maybe you want to talk about it without mentioning anything, <laughs> be quite as generic as possible, but. Um, using AI to mine data in a way that engenders customer um, affection, if you like, mm. and therefore loyalty going forward. You know, I don't know if you want to just, yeah. So, you know, it's it's self-service is very important. And when you're done with that, if you could just sort of round up today's conversation right. for me as well. So, I am, um, I think, how do I make this very generic? <laughs> but, okay, <laughs> let me use this example. The banks now that are using ATMs mm. that can accept checks, mm. That and there's some banks that you walk in and you actually have to deal with systems, computers, and not human beings mm. before you get to the tellers. That reduces one waste because someone like me, oh good, I like that I'm <laughs> having to talk about this. I write terribly. I have mm. terrible handwriting, and having to fill a form, you know, at the bank to put, let's say... Somebody said to me yesterday, says, Yo, they sent me some form, some bank. Yeah, I don't even understand the form. <laughs> I've looked at it five times. I don't understand the form. So I've not filled it. You so know, I'm going to another bank. And that's the thing. Some, <laughs> we've gone to the era where paper... Well, a lot of people are going paperless. I would rather a bank where I just get there, tap a few buttons, and just puts me in a queue. Crystal. And I'm done. Versus... Writes your name at the back of the check and the back of this one. Writes your address, puts this there. Draw a map from your house to <laughs> the nearest. <laughs> you know, and I can't believe that in this day and age, people still do this. You know, asking us to draw. What the person doesn't even know the way to their house? How are they going to draw that map? And it's okay, nearest, um, what do you call that landmark. thing? Landmark. And then draw it from there. Oh my. You could eliminate all this. Mm. The person just... You have you have a database right now. We've got a Ghana car connected to the Ghana Post GPS address. I'm expecting that with all this digitalization agenda and everything going on, companies will learn how to use that data to the benefit of the people. You come to the bank, you give us your Ghana card, and that's it. You don't have to do anything again because now we have your TIN number. We have all this. We put you in the system. We know that you work here, you work there. This is your phone number. No need to fill a form. All we have to ask you is: Is this correct? You say yes, and you're done. You move there. Five minutes, presto, just like you said. Maybe even less. That turnaround time for a client means a lot because you've saved them time. Mm. And for them to think that I would, I can always do this with you know your platform everywhere. It's not only coming to your bank, using your repeat apps. Business. You repeat, business. repeat business. You get repeat business. So, yeah, self-service, making customers making things easy for customers, mm. making steps, reducing the number of steps, it does help retain customers as well and gives them a very good customer experience. What are we talking about next week, Kobe? So... <laughs> next week is our final conversation. Though, next week it? is our final conversation. Yeah. And I think that 
the most important thing that we need to highlight would be the tools that are available now. Mm. So next week, we will be talking about some of the tools that business can leverage now. Mm. So yes, we've mentioned ChatGPT a couple of times, Bing, Bard, um, Midjourney, Dali. So next week, I will talk about all a lot of the tools, not all because it's thousands of them, but a lot of the popular tools and how people can use businesses, can use them to either reduce the turnaround time or the the process time for their businesses. Wonderful thoughts there, Kobe. Please write this down. Proof of ID. Next <laughs> week. No, you can't. Please open the show with that. Proof of ID. Proof of ID, sure. And the fact that this, now it's not just your Ghana card or your identification, but everything you do online is now becoming a part of your identification. Absolutely. And it is what the system says it is. And the system is the government, is the regulator, is everything else but you. Now, when you walk up into an embassy and say, my name is Kobe Spikey, they say, what shows that you are Kobe Spikey? Mm. That's where the conversation is getting. Thank you so much for those thoughts. This has been Masterclass here on your Superstation. Thank you for staying with us. We've been talking about AI and customer service with Kobe Spikey and Chroma, tech consultant and host of Geek Squad. Next week, God willing, we come your way with yet another exciting edition. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you same time next week.